So in this lesson, we're going to focus on total internal reflection. And we have a question that asks, what is the critical angle between air and water? Well, let's draw a picture first. So let's say that's the air-water interface. And we have air on top, water on the bottom. Now, in order for total internal reflection to occur, the light ray has to travel from a material with a high index of refraction value to a material with a low index of refraction value. So in this example, it has to go from water to air and not the other way around. So let's say if a light ray strikes this boundary. And so this is the angle of incidence. Now, if the angle of incidence, if it's less than the critical angle, two things will happen. Some of the light rays will bounce back, so reflection will still occur, but some of it will pass through the air-water boundary, and so refraction will occur. Well, as the incident angle increases, let's say if it becomes the critical angle, at the critical angle, the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. And so the light ray, it's going to stay at the water-air interface. Now, if the incident angle exceeds the critical angle, if it's greater than it, then there's not going to be any refraction. Total internal reflection will occur. If the incident angle is less than the critical angle, we're going to have refraction and partial reflection. But if the incident angle is greater than the critical angle, then we have total internal reflection. So let's work on this example. So what is the critical angle between air and water? So keep in mind, the incident angle is the critical angle if the angle of refraction is 90. So this is going to be theta r. And so now let's calculate the critical angle. So let's use Snell's law. n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So let's say 1 is associated with water and 2 for air. So n1, that's going to be 1.33 times sine theta 1, or the critical angle. And that equals n2, which is 1 times sine of 90 degrees. Now sine 90 is equal to 1. And so we need to divide both sides by 1.33. 1 divided by 1.33, that's 0 0.7519. And so that's equal to sine of the critical angle. Now to calculate the critical angle, we need to take the inverse sine or arc sine of 0.7519. And so for this example, the critical angle is 48.76 degrees. So this is the answer. So let's say if the incident angle was 30. In that case, refraction will occur. If the incident angle is equal to the critical angle, 48.76, then the angle of refraction will be 90. And if the incident angle was, let's say, 60 degrees or something, if it was greater than the critical angle, then total internal reflection will occur. There will be no refraction whatsoever. So let me give you a visual illustration of what I was saying. So let's say this is the normal line. And let's say the incident angle is small. So in this case, let's say it's less than the critical angle the angle of refraction will be relatively small as well. But it's going to be larger than the incident angle. So refraction will occur. Now in the next scenario, we're going to say that the incident angle is going to be larger, but this time it's going to be equal to the critical angle. So when it equals the critical angle, this angle will increase. And so it's going to be enough where it's 90.
So anytime the instant angle equals the critical angle, the angle of refraction is 90. Now, once the instant angle exceeds the critical angle, so this time it's going to be very wide, there's not going to be any sort of angle of refraction. So in this case, only reflection will occur. So let's say if this is 70 degrees, I'm not sure what just happened there, then this will be 70. So remember, for reflection, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So that's what's going to happen if this situation becomes true. Number two, the critical angle between a material and air is 41.8 degrees. What is the index of refraction? So let's say this is the material and this is air. And so here we have the normal line. So the light ray has to go from a material with a high index of refraction to a material with a low index of refraction. So we have to go from the material to air because for air, it's pretty much the lowest it can be, which is almost a vacuum. So what is the index of refraction? Well, we know the incident angle is the critical angle. And anytime the incident angle is the critical angle, the angle of refraction will always be 90 degrees. So don't forget that. So theta r is 90, and we have the critical angle that's 41.8 degrees. So let's say n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So for the left side, I'm going to use the information associated with air. For the right side, the material. So n1 for air, that's simply 1. And the angle that's associated with air is the angle of refraction, which is 90. And we're looking for n2. And the critical angle, that's going to be theta 2, that's 41.8 degrees. Now we know that sine 90 is equal to 1, and sine 41.8, that's 0.6665 times n2. So 1 divided by 0.6665, that's equal to 1.5. So the index of refraction of the material is 1.5, which is basically the index of refraction for glass. Number 3. A light ray strikes a diamond air interface at 20 degrees. The index of refraction of diamond is 2.42. Will total internal reflection occur? So let's say we have air above and diamond beneath. And let's say this is the normal line. And so let's say this is the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Now, in order to determine if total internal reflection will occur, we need to calculate the critical angle first. The critical angle is the incident angle when the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So let's say that n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So let's use 1 for diamond and the subscript 2 for air. So the index of refraction for diamond is 2.42. And we need to calculate the critical angle. The index of refraction for air is 1. And then theta 2 is the angle of refraction, which is 90 degrees. Psi 90 is 1, and so we need to divide both sides by 2.42. 1 divided by 2.42, that's 0.413, and so that's equal to sine of the critical angle. So the critical angle is going to be arc sine of 0.413. 
So in this case, the critical angle is 24.4 degrees. So now all we need to do is compare the angle of incidence to the critical angle. So in part A, the incident angle is 20 degrees. Because the incident angle is less than the critical angle, total internal reflection will not occur. So for part A, the answer is no. Now part B, what if the angle of incidence is increased to 35 degrees? 35 is greater than 24.4. So if the incident angle exceeds the critical angle, then the answer is yes, total internal reflection will occur. And so that's the answer for part B.